Hi, welcome to LRRMTG. I'm Graham. I'm Serge. And today we are going to be opening an entire box of the Lord of the Rings. Not what I expected, but this is cool. What? <laughs> what is this? Uh, man, someone sent us this. This is a product of Simulations Publications Incorporated from a year yet to I'm be gonna determined. Guess 82. 1977. Oh my god. Yo, check out the art of Frodo on the side, though. Oh, I know. All the art oh, I is love, weird. Oh, I yeah. love this. Lord of the Nazgul is just like a dragon. <laughs> I don't know. This Aragorn doesn't look like anything how I expect it. So <laughs> terrible, obviously. Anyway, no, we have a box of set boosters of Magic the Gathering, Universes Beyond, The Lord of the Rings, Tales of Middle-Earth. A new chapter of a timeless tale. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, there's a lot of different uh, qualifiers on this one. But yeah, we're just going to we're just going to crack into it. At time of recording, not everything has been uh, revealed, though. You and I have both seen a bunch of stuff as a result of prepping for the PPR. I know the mechanics. I only know like three cards because they popped up on Twitter. I'm going into this like fairly blind. Mechanically okay. solid, but actual card art and stuff blind. Now, actually, before we jump into it too much, yeah. what is your Lord of the Rings background? Like how much oh. do you know about Lord of the Rings, not magic? I've watched all of the movies. Okay. And the extended editions, which I've recently purchased on Blu-ray, oh. uh, though I'm told that some of the effects don't necessarily hold up in HD. Uh, and I'm going to watch that after the PPR because I don't want to confuse <laughs> myself. <Sure. laughs> uh, and when I was younger, I did read The Hobbit, and I actually do not remember if I ever actually read Lord of the Rings. I've read all of the Discworld. <laughs> <laughs> that was my fantasy world of choice. Fair, fair. I have the trilogy. I actually have a beautiful oh. like set of the three books if you're ever interested. Okay, good. Well, I'm yeah. glad that one of us has some sort of operating <laughs> it's, understanding. It's of... been a while, I'm going right. to be honest. It's been a while. And uh, so, yeah, I read The Hobbit, read The Lord of the Rings, picked up the Cimmerillion for like three minutes. I was like, this is boring. I'm, <laughs> so, I'm out. It's an encyclopedia of so a fantasy dense. world. I'm it like, is, I don't want to yeah. study. Isn't like studying what Gandalf's all about? Yeah, I I didn't, a card. Read those, I didn't read those books and think to myself, I'm going to be Gandalf when I grow up. There's a you know? card of Gandalf in the set, and one of his abilities is literally that he boogers off to the library. <laughs> Actually, on the top yeah. here is a Realms and Relics box topper. I'm actually pretty stoked. What, what does what? that mean? I don't know. I was going to say, is it an alternate art? Is it extra fancy? Is it extra shiny? I don't know, but it's really stuck on there. Let's find out together. What do you think? One card? Three cards? It is a single card. Okay. And it... Oh, okay. So this is... Comments, we need your help to come up with a better name for this. We've been calling them um, the Godzilla treatment. Oh, right. Where yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah, a yeah, reprint, yeah. but they have a new name and new art and then yeah. the real name of the card underneath. So this is a reprint of Cabal Coffers. That's cool. Yeah. Actually, Minas Morgul. Oh my God, it's so pretty. Right? Hold on a second. Oh yeah. my God, I love this. Now, you like a good Cabal Coffers every now and again. I do. I'm, a, I'm like an old school magic player. Right. I like the original printing typically. It, the very, very few of the like fancy treatments have caught my attention with the exception of the uh, the Masterpiece set from Kaladesh. Right. But this is pretty. It's very nice. This is very it? pretty. Have yeah. you seen the other cards in the set? Like Cavern of Souls was another one. Yeah, the, which is the Path of the Dead, I think. Mm. If you haven't seen one of our Cracker Boxes before, Serge and I are going to open a whole box. Again, these are set boosters. So as it proclaims here, guaranteed. Guaranteed foil and art card, which is <laughs> singular, kind of sure. like not well one in one in each pack. Oh, okay, it's like not the most exciting parts of this, frankly. There's probably going to be cards from the commander sets. There's stuff from the list, maybe. We're not going to go through every single card we open here, but we'll we'll show you some interesting stuff. So, I mean, I was deriding the art card, but they are, the art is gorgeous. For Lord of the Rings fans, this must be lovely because it's just like hundreds of new gorgeous images of this world that that yeah. you love. Did you see on the art that a lot of them are panorama art pieces that sit side by side by side and together? I love that in magic. There's a bunch. I love that yeah. there's there's one that's like Frodo, Sam, Gollum, and the ring that make up like the ring being destroyed in Mount oh, Doom. Oh, cool. Okay. There's one that's like six cards that are Bilbo's birthday party in the Shire. Then there's one that's like 16 yeah, it's a cards. Four by that's, four. It's the Battle of Pelennor Fields, and oh, it looks amazing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, right. And armies are back, but they're orcs this time. So we got an orc army. I also have an orc army. Very cool. All right. Tie. All right. In this, in this game of pack wars here. <laughs> so I got, speaking of one of those panoramas, another one of those scenes is the last march of the Ents. Oh, yeah. Featuring the card, last march of the Ents, <laughs> which I opened here. Have you seen this one? No. Okay. Six green, green sorcery. 
Better do a lot. Uh, well, it can't be countered. Okay, good start. All right. Draw cards equal to the greatest toughness among creatures you control. Okay. Then put any number of creatures from your hand onto the battlefield. That's kind of cool. Pretty cool. That's really cool. I mean, it's it's a, a smaller version of Eureka, mm -hmm. creatures only, but you just made a commander player somewhere really happy oh, with that no, one. I have a mythic, which is that one, and then there's another rare here, which what? is Pippin, Guard of the Citadel. Ooh. Uh, white, blue, 2-2, two, two, Vigilance, Ward 1, tap another creature you control gains protection from the card type of your choice until end of turn. Oh my god, it's another Mother of Runes. Kinda, yeah. Oh, that's fascinating. But with Ward 1 and Vigilance. Yeah, it protects itself. No, that's that's really cool. Yeah. I mean, if we want to talk about Highlander playable, I'd play that in blue-white tempo. Oh, yeah, I bet you yeah. would, actually. Yeah, that's, and, a, that's a great point. I mean, it doesn't have the same flexibility as Mother of Runes in that, you know, you can protect from a spell and then attack through, but, like, that protects you from removal spells. Mm -hmm. uh, protection of a card type. That works against all creatures as a blocker, for example. <laughs> oh, yeah, So you just, you just tap in and attack and kill, which is kind of wild. So unlike you, I only have a single rare okay. in my pack, and it's a saga. There and back again. Oh, fun. Yeah. Five mana, three red red, and the art is stunning. The art is smog on a giant oh, pile yeah. of gold. This is beautiful. Uh, up to one target creature can't block as long as you control there and black again. And the ring tempts you. Oh. Yeah. Search your library for mountain card, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle, which is interesting. Okay. And then finally, create smog, a legendary 6-6 six, six red dragon creature token with flying haste and when it dies create how many treasure tokens you think smog creates i actually know the you answer. know the answer to this yeah. we were talking 14. About 14 why is there a significance of 14 in the books for the 13 dwarves and bilbo of course oh i forgot yeah. there was 13 dwarves that's so many dwarves and there and back again is the name of the, the book. The that, book that Bilbo is writing about yeah. his the instance the Hobbit, which is sort of the book of the Hobbit is supposed to be kind of that book that Bilbo wrote. Right. Yeah. Of course. Cool. And an, an interesting thing about these packs, I actually have, and this is maybe why you got double rare. Uh, it comes with a full art borderless card. Okay. So I have the Dunland Creban here. Creebane. I don't know how to pronounce this. What did you call me? Yeah. <laughs> And it's a three mana one one flying common, but I guess because it has the extended art, it takes that slot. So mm, like uh, okay. like the old Innistrad sets, this might be the the type of pack that you get multiple rares. I mean, I actually got a third one. I just didn't even tell you. <laughs> There's I also got flowering of the white tree. What is with this pack disparity? I don't know. Yeah, it was a mythic, and then a, it, which was the mass march of the ends, and then Pippin was a rare, and then this the flowering of the white tree is an enchantment. Legendary creatures you control have plus two, plus two, and ward one. And non-legendaries you control get plus one, plus one. So it's a cheap anthem for everything. But if the creature's legendary, it gets one more power and ward one. That's also really cool. Right? There's some spice in this set. That's pretty good. I mean, at least in your pack. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. You got your Dunland Creebane. <laughs> Touche. I'm sorry. You're right. You're right. You're right. Have you seen the special basics in this set yet? Uh, oh, with the maps? Oh my god, yeah. I just got the planes with the map of the Shire on it. Aren't they great? I didn't know these were in the set. These are stunning. Yeah, check it out. This mountain has the Misty Mountains. Oh my god. Isn't that cool? <laughs> that is really cool. The showcase frame for this set, seen here on Faramir Field Commander. I love it. Oh, I yeah. think it's really, really cool. Like, yeah, it's you don't you're sort of losing some art around the edges, but it. I just think it's it's so evocative and wonderful. I've got a similar one, Peregrine Took. Ooh. Yeah, same frame. I was going to highlight it, and you brought it up. I'm like, yeah, this is what it looks like in green. Actually, uh, sort of a random thing in my pack. Yeah. My pack doesn't have a single card that isn't green or white. Is it supposed to be themed? I think sometimes the set boosters are or can be collated in an interesting way in some, in some ways, I think. The one I just opened has, like, it's mostly Grixis, except for the... Except then it's got, like, another Pippin and a different Azorius Legendary. This makes me extremely happy. I opened Second Breakfast. <gasps> Delicious! This is a three-mana instant. Up to two target creatures each get plus two plus one and then create a food token. Hmm. It's, a, it's a combat trick. Oh, I love that. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so much fun. I like that, so that card, you're talking about Peregrine Took there. Yeah. There's Peregrine Took and there's a Mariaduk Bramblebuck? Is that his last name? I'm not. Yeah. 
It's a uh, Mary Brandy Buck. Brandy Buck, not Bramble Buck. So there's multiple iter- there's multiple cards, multiple iterations of a lot of the main characters in the Fellowship through the set. There's like four Gandalfs. I've got the Pippin, mm. guard of the Citadel, but before he was Pippin, he was Peregrine Took. Right? Like this is this is this is sort of like the early iteration. This mm. is when he hasn't left the Shire yet or something. I'm not entirely sure. I guess it's also interesting for this as well to be like, what particular moment in the story happens, like chronologically? Because mm-hmm. the cards, I guess in this case, are telling the entire story, right? You don't have the one character. You have the journey of the character. Yeah. Uh, in fact, here's the end of a journey. We have many partings, which I believe is when they start at the end, very, very end of Return of the King when they head to the Grey Havens. A sorcery, search your library for a basic land, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle and make a food. Like the art is also stunning in that. Oh, all the all the art <laughs> in this whole set is great. Oh. I got Sauron of the Many Colors. Oh, there's only three. <laughs> I mean, that's mo- that technically is many, Graham. Okay, fair enough. You're yeah. right. All right. Saruman of the flowchart of decisions. Have you have you tried to read what this card does? Can you tell me, first of all, actually, mm. the most ridiculous thing about this card, the ward cost. All right, yeah. So if you don't know the newest Saruman, six mana, five, four, legendary avatar wizard, ward, discard an enchantment, instant, or sorcery. So if you don't have an enchantment, instant, or sorcery in your hand... Whatever you try to do to Saruman is getting countered. <laughs> That's messed up. Go with me on this journey. Okay. It's, it's a tale as long as, as the trilogy. <laughs> Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, right. each opponent mills two cards. When one or more cards are milled this way, exile target enchantment, instant, or sorcery card with equal or lesser mana value than that spell from an opponent's graveyard. Wow. Then copy the exiled spell and you may cast it without paying its mana cost <laughs> holy moly i actually had a talk with um wild. with paul about that specifically because the word that that they're using mm-hmm. isn't correct english wise but yeah. it, it does a lot of heavy listing for the words magic uses very particular language what i have a card with a different set symbol on it oh that's probably from the list uh dolman gate yeah and it's got is that oh uh, that's uh lorwin yeah yeah, yeah, yeah the yeah. little lorwin thing on it and I it's got, got a it. little watermark in the bottom corner as well yep that that means it's on the list oh. i got a path to the world tree from kaldheim <laughs> well i mean i guess i i had opened a mythic because that's sormon i've got a rare which is the dolman gate here so um yeah i think i think the Two rare, upwards of three rares per pack is very much possible. Yeah, I don't want to blow your mind. I got another triple rare pack here. Because <laughs> uh, my f- <laughs> my foil, that's that's part of what it is, because every pack has a foil. My foil is a rare. It's the Doors of Durin. Have you heard this one? No. Check this out. Three red-green, legendary artifact. Whenever you attack, so it can do something the turn you play it. I hope it does something good for five mana for an artifact. Whenever you attack, scry two. Then you may reveal the top card of your library. If it's a creature card, put it onto the battlefield tapped and attacking. Until your next turn, it gains Trample if you control a Dwarf, and Hexproof if you control an Elf. That's the end of the ability. There's no sacrifice at no, the you end just of get combat, the creature. you just get the creature. That's really cool. Yeah. Also, the Horn of the Mark is another legendary artifact, and also a legendary land. You have my attention as a Premier Lands pilot of I was going to say, yep. the Premier Lands pilot of Crackabox, uh, it's, <laughs> it's the Shire. Oh! It enters tapped unless you control a legendary creature, taps for a green, one and a green, and tap, tap an untapped creature you control, make a food. Neat. Does that go with, uh, I don't know, goose? So More food for goose? All right. I, I'm assuming it's in the context of needing Highlander. I haven't made a food deck yet, but it's it's... There's got to be something close. So Wheeler and I have been workshopping a like goblin, um, a goblin tinker deck that involves sacrificing tokens and making a bunch of stuff like that. Okay. But I really want to try and make old Rutstein happen. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, and um, and there's a lot of food synergies in this set that I think might be enough to make me start brewing. I don't know. If you've got ideas for decks, let me know in the comments down below because I'm I'm always I, I want to brew the food deck. I really want to brew the food deck. Another Doors of Durin, which is kind of interesting. Oh, and that's. Th- that is the only rare in this pack. So there we go. Now I'm back to a single rare. Okay. You shall not pass. Read it again. The Balrog no, Durin's no, no. Bane. No, the name of the card. The Balrog Durin's Bane? I have the Balrog. Oh, I see. <laughs> Sorry. Gandalf. 
There's a card. The card in the set is you cannot pass oh. because in the book it's you cannot. Oh, pass. they change it in the movie. Yeah. Hey, uh, before that, uh, this is miscut. Oh, neat. Take a look. Yeah, the Balrog is off center. Nobody tells the Balrog where to go. <laughs> I haven't seen this actually. Seven mana, seven five. Avatar demon costs one less to cast for each permanent sacrifice this turn. It's got haste, can't be blocked except by legendary creatures, and when it dies, you destroy an artifact or creature and opponent controls. Hey, that's messed up. It's kind of cool. I think that card's really good. Yeah. And you're evaluating this probably from, like, limited, right? Limited, commander, yeah. I think. I'm going to be honest. The past three years have, have really changed my opinions of commander for the better. Like, when you when you talked about that red-green artifact that, that lets yeah. you get creatures on the board, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm, so many people are going to brew on that, right? How about this one? Have you heard of Mirkwood Bats? No, go this, on. This card seems messed up, in certainly in a format like Commander. Maybe you 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 let me know if sure, you think sure, this. Sure, 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 sure. <laughs> let me know if you think this gets into Aristocrats. Three and a black for a two three flying bat. Four mana for a two three flying. Okay, okay, not astounding. Yeah. Whenever you create or sacrifice a token, each opponent loses one life. It's just token, not even yep. artifact or anything like that. Create or sacrifice a token. Oh, can I hold this? <laughs> so again, I don't know about aristocrats specifically, yeah. but in these treasure decks that we're yes. talking about now. Oh, wow. Can you imagine uh, if you have that out and you do the Smaug thing from that saga and you make the token beep, beep. of Smaug and then you sacrifice the token and yeah. you make 14 tokens and you sacrifice those tokens? Each, this is commander, like oh, each yeah. opponent. Oh my God. This yeah. is going to make a lot That's of people unhappy. With the, what's that stupid <laughs> yeah. red dragon from the D&D set? The copper, ancient copper dragon ancient or whatever? copper dragon, yeah. Oh my God. Now, we don't tend to talk about tokens a lot. Speaking mm. of speaking of tokens, we don't, we don't <laughs> tend to talk about uh, you know like the tokens or whatever when we're doing the cracker boxes. But have you seen the token of the ring? I believe you'll find it's an emblem. Sorry, the emblem of the ring. <laughs> so sorry. So this is very no, no. So sorry. You got me, but fair enough. So this is interesting because on the one side it has a picture of the ring and the thing where you can track what the ring is doing. Yeah. And on the back is the rules reminder text. That's, I love that. Did actually. you know this is perforated? So that you can do this, and then you have the emblem to track, and then you can give the ring to the creature that's holding the ring. I did not know that, Isn't as you can tell cool? from my yeah. reaction. That was a visceral Your response. Your ring bearer actually bears the yeah. ring? You can just go, here you go. Then you can keep track of who's holding on to the ring. I think that's really clever. I like, I, what a cool I, idea. I can't wait for somebody to make very special little sleeves for t both parts of <laughs> You know what I mean? I can see that happening. Huh. Yeah. I have a couple cards to talk about in the set. Only one rare. All right. But I have a foil like full art card here. Oh yeah. Nasty end, two mana instant, one in a black. As an additional cost, cast a spell, sack a creature, draw two cards. If the creature you sacrificed was legendary, draw three. Oh, nice. And check out the art for that. Oh yeah, this is from the, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a couple orcs or goblins meeting a, meeting a nasty end. Yeah, very, very pretty. Very cool. We have the Lash of the Balrog. As an additional cost, cast a spell, sack a creature, or pay four. Destroy target creature for a single black. It's a sorcery. Mm. Here's Legolas Counter of Kills with the showcase frame in two colors. I like there's a Legolas Counter of Kills and a Gimli Counter of Kills. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I didn't know if that was only from the movie or not. The kill counting part. Like I didn't that banter. know either. Yeah. So I the fact that it's in a card, I'm like, all right, obviously yeah. it's from the books. Yeah. Oh, I got a card from the commander decks, which is Sam, loyal attendant. Oh. One green white for a two, four halfling peasant partners with Frodo, adventurous hobbit. In the commander decks, they have some partner with cards. Cool. I think Merry and Pippin also have some partner hmm. uh, ones in the commander decks. Two, four. At the beginning of combat on your turn, create a food token. And activated abilities of food you control cost one less to activate. Oh, that's cool. It's cheaper to eat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I got a foil borderless of the Balrog. Let me see your Balrog's lash. Oh, do you think it's an extension of the art I there? I think it connects like this. I think you're right. I know people were asking about the Balrog having wings. It looks like it has wings of smoke. It looks like... Why didn't it just I know fly? That, Is that I the know question? That this was, no, I know this was an intense... This has been an intense matter of debate, the description in the book. Yeah, the description of the book never says it has wings. Yeah. Which is why... But everyone sort of assumes that it has wings. But yeah, that's a, that's a point of some contention, Oh, I, I guess, because in other, in other depictions in fantasy, Balrogs do have wings. Mm -hmm. Like Diablo, classically, the Balrogs have wings. Yeah. Yeah. 
It looks like they've gone with... In, in a lot of Lord of the Rings art, the Balrog does have wings. It looks but... like they've gone with fiery smoke that gives the impression mm. of wings. Just this... kind, kind of couching their bets a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Here's the foil map version of the swamp. Oh, yeah. Oh, I love that. Oh, here we go. Here's Gimli counter of kills. They don't, like, necessarily... They both care about creatures dying, which, I mean, I guess makes sense, but they don't necessarily, like, fully synergize beyond just you want your opponent's creatures to die, (laughs) which, uh... Uh, That's a pretty good synergy, you know? Yeah, I should have said, Legolas is two green blue for a 2-3 with reach. Whenever you scry, if Legolas' counter of kills is tapped, you may untap it. Do this only once each turn. Gimli is three and a red for a 4-3 with trample, and Gimli says whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, Gimli deals one damage to that creature's controller, and Legolas says whenever a creature an opponent controls dies, put a plus one plus one counter on Legolas. So it's like, if you kill something, Legolas gets stronger and Gimli hurts something. They slice, they dice. Mm -hmm. Interesting rare here, and I apologize in advance for my pronunciation, Minas Tirith? Yeah, I think so. We've only, uh, you know, for a lot of things, we've only seen these written down or saw them in a movie uh, longer ago. Decade ago. ago. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. It's more than 10 years ago, isn't it? I think so, yeah. Whatever. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. Minas Tirith. Legendary land. Nice. Enters the battlefield tapped unless you control a legendary creature. Okay. Uh, Tap to add a white or one in a white. Tap, draw a card. Activate only if you attacked with two or more creatures this turn. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Yeah. (laughs) Hey, this one's interesting. The, speaking of legendary land, this is an uncommon. It's the Grey Havens. When they enter the battlefield, scry one, taps for colorless, or taps for one man of any color among legendary creature cards in your graveyard. 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 Interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. Ooh, what's this? Forge anew. This is another, this is oh, a rare. This one's cool. I this saw this cool? on Twitter. Okay, oh, sweet. Oh my God, this card in my heart. Two and a white enchantment. When Forge New enters the battlefield, return an equipment from your graveyard to the battlefield. I know you're a fan of the of, of equipment. As long as it's your turn, you may activate equip abilities anytime you could cast an instant, and you may pay zero rather than the equip cost of the first equip ability you activate during each of your turns. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That card is cracked in half. Oh, my God. Get, I, yeah. uh, get uh, what is it? Uh, Brunor from the D&D set. A Kaladesh? Mm, or combo. not Kaladesh. Um, Cauldre Complete. Oh my god. Yeah, the giant the giant great hammer. There's a bunch of equipment that casts for like one mana but costs fourteen to equip or something stupid like that. Oh, that's messed up. Yeah. I'm sorry, Lane and Shikari. I think you might be getting the boot forever. <laughs> but not the equipment, the boot. Just you're fired. I got actually I should talk about this because I also got Elrond, Master of Healing. And traditionally Simic elves. Uh, have been pretty powerful. In, is, that, is that a Simic on common over in, there? In Commander. This one's a rare. Oh, oh. <laughs> uh, so it's two green blue for a 4-4 four, four elf noble. Elrond is big. Love a good 4-4 for 4. four, four. Whenever you scry, put a plus and plus encounter on each of up to X target creatures where X is the number of cards looked at while scrying this way. So if you scry two, you get to put a counter on two creatures. Whenever a creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, you may draw a card. That's, Elrond seems pretty sweet. Ooh. Shadow of the Enemy. A mythic black sorcery for three black, black, black. Six mana mythic sorcery. Exile all creature cards from target player's graveyard. You may cast spells from among those cards for as long as they remain exiled, and mana of any type can be spent to cast them. Whoa. So your graveyard is now my graveyard, but you still have to cast it. But you can do it whenever? Wow. Sorry, here you go. There you go. There's you cannot pass. Oh, you cannot pass! I I, I want to try to do a different action presentation of it. I want to show you why I was so confused. Oh, what's up? I got Golem. Oh, the Patient Plotter, two mana, three, one, legendary halfling horror for one in a black. When Gollum leaves the battlefield, the ring tempts you. And in black and sack a creature, return Gollum from your graveyard to your hand. Activate only as a sorcery. Neat. Yeah. Ah, Legolas, Master Archer. Have you seen Legolas? No. This is wild. One green green for a 1-4 with reach. This all tracks. Sounds like a pretty normal archer so far. Whenever you cast a spell that targets Legolas, you put a plus one plus one counter on Legolas. Sure. Whenever you cast a spell that targets a creature you don't control, Legolas deals damage equal to its power to up to one target creature. So if you have like a punch card, Legolas also gets to punch something else. Just 
So and if that, you have spells or spells and abilities, spells. So if you have like hunt the weak or something, right? That it's like you put a counter on Legolas, yeah. and fight something. You're also putting another counter on Legolas from Legolas's own ability and fighting the thing that you're targeting with hunt the weak and punching something else. If you made a commander deck and that was the theme, mm -hmm. what would you call it? Ooh, that's a toughie. The old do, one do you lean two? on like the do you lean on the archery thing or on well, I've just the been punching? Saying punching? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know. Interesting thought. And the other question I have about that is is one four the traditional archer stat? Because I think of two one with reach as being the classic archer. I don't uh, know. I just think of something that can block really well. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think typically you have spiders as reach creatures with big booties, not right. as archers. That's true. Ooh, shiny second breakfast. <laughs> Ooh, yum. <laughs> ah, I, this is the Aragorn I haven't seen. There's four Aragorns. This is the only one I haven't seen. Oh, you're very excited about something. I'll read you this one. One green, white for a 3-3 human ranger. Whenever the ring tempts you, if you chose a creature other than Aragorn, company leader, as your ring bearer, put your choice of a counter from among First Strike, Vigilance, Death Touch, and Lifelink on Aragorn. Whenever you put one or more counters on Aragorn, put one of each of those kinds of counters on up to one other target creature. In the case of nothing else happening, this particular Aragorn is a 3-3 three, three for 3, which is fine. Fine. Then if the if the ring tempts you and you pick a different creature, then you can put, like, a first strike counter on Aragorn, and then you also get to put a first strike counter on a different creature. Maybe your ring bearer, maybe not. But also, that's just any time a counter. If you put a plus one, plus one counter on Aragorn, you also get to put a plus one, plus one counter on something else. Green-white counters is yeah. eating very well this set. Yeah. We haven't talked a lot about Golgari yet. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I got Schmeagol, Helpful Guide. Ooh. Three mana, four, two, legendary halfling horror for one, a black, and a green. Okay. At the beginning of your end step, if a creature died under your control this turn, the ring tempts you. Whenever the ring tempts you, target opponent reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal a land. Put that card onto the battlefield tapped under your control and the rest into their graveyard. Interesting. Yeah. That's cool. Speaking of Golgari, actually, I got... There's a bunch of good tree folk in this set, too. Okay. Old Man Willow, legendary tree folk. It's two black green for a star star. Power and toughness are equal to the number of lands you control. Okay. Whenever Old Man Willow attacks, you may sacrifice another creature or a token. A token. Any kind of token. When you do, target creature an opponent controls gets minus two, minus two until it turns. Oh, wow. Just a neat little huh. uncommon green-black tree folk. I had another rare, though. Oh, did you? Yeah. Now, what's interesting is, I don't know if it goes every pack is a guaranteed story character or not, because it's not that the art is different. It's not that the show... It's just like two rares from the set. So I don't know what the qualifier was for this pack. Hmm. But my second rare was the Ring Wraiths. What? Six mana, five, five, Wraith Knight for four black, black. When Ring Wraiths enters the battlefield, the target creature and opponent controls get minus three, minus three until end of turn. Okay. If that creature is legendary, its controller loses three life. <laughs> wow. And when the ring tempts you, return the Ring Wraiths from the graveyard to your hand. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. gross. <laughs> So that's interesting because, so I don't know if you've seen this. Have you seen the Nazgul? Not yet, no. Okay, so there's a card. So this is a rare just called Ring Wraiths, yeah. which is like, I guess, the group of the Ring Wraiths. But there's an uncommon called Nazgul. <clears throat> just in case we don't see it, I'm going to tell you what it does because yeah. I think it's really cool. It's two and a black for a one, two with death touch. When it enters the battlefield, you put a plus one, plus one counter on each Wraith you control. Oh, cool. So it's a two, three. Yeah. For, with death touch for two. You can have up to nine Nazgul in your deck because there's nine Nazgul chasing them, right? Huh. They've there's nine different art. Oh, for that's it. really cool. So you can have one of each of the different nine pieces of art as all of the Nazgul in your deck, huh. which is super cool. But then we they, have a card that's also the Ring Wraiths. Ring Wraiths. Which is interesting. These the are also the collective noun for it, I guess. They're also a so wraith it's knight. One Nazgul, multiple ring wraiths. I, I guess <laughs> is that the collective noun? Yeah, my rare here: the fall of Gil Galad. Gil Galad. I apologize. Sure. Two mana saga for one and a green. First chapter, scry two. Second chapter, put two plus one plus one counters on target creature you control. Chapter three, until end of turn, target creature you control gains. When this creature dies, draw two. Then 
that creature fights up to one other target creature. Nice. Okay. So it's interesting. It's it's a two mana saga. Yeah. That you're and, and it's a rare. Huh. So it's like nothing it does is particularly powerful, but it's a two drop. That seems really sweet, honestly. Yeah, like you put that on two, scry, set up your extra. Oh, it'd be tough because you want to make sure you have that creature in play mm. for the second chapter. So maybe play it on turn three. I've also got, you were talking about the Mirkwood Bats before. I've got uh, an extended art version of it. Oh, very cool. Which is quite pretty. That's part of the Battle of Pelennor Fields uh, ensemble as well. I've got a Gandalf the Grey. Oh, our, is this our first Gandalf? Y- no, actually, I did open the Friend of the Shire, the uncommon one. Oh, back, sure. But I didn't mention it. Are you disappointed that it's not an artifact or colorless when it's Gandalf the Grey? I would. <laughs> I would, I would have loved if its color represented, you know, That's the color true. of its dress. But Gandalf the Gray or Gandalf the White is is white. Okay, uh, but no, Gandalf the Gray is is it because you know he cares about spells. He's sure. a wizard. Three four. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, choose one that hasn't been chosen. You may tap or untap target permanent. Deals three damage to each opponent. Copy target instant or sorcery spell you control. You may choose new targets for the copy, or put Gandalf on top of its owner's library. So I love that he does a bunch of stuff and then <laughs> gotta go heads back to the library. <laughs> it's very cool and clearly one of the most powerful creatures in the entire set. It's Bill the Pony. <laughs> oh my God, Bill the Pony! I got it to Wheeler. Three and a white for a one four enters the battlefield with two food tokens, and you can sacrifice a food token. Uh, and until end of turn, target creature you control assigns combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. But fight. But fight. Yeah. I think Bill the Pony. You think most beloved card from the set? Oh, I think Easy. So. Oh, I think pe- people are gonna yeah. love <laughs> Bill the Pony. <laughs> I. I don't know if it's good. I just have a card called Shortcut to Mushrooms, so that makes me really happy. <laughs> that is very funny, honestly. It's a two-mana enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, the ring tempts you. At the beginning of your end step, if a permanent you controlled left the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control. Oh. It's like it's, it's um, kind of cool. Morbid. Uh, revolt. Revolt. I'm sorry. Yes. Morbid is only if it dies. Revolt is if a permanent left. Yeah. yeah. Revolt is your permanence. Yeah. Why is it called shortcut to mushrooms, though? Because they're taking a shortcut to Farmer What's it? F- farmer Maggot. Oh, man. And his mushrooms. There's a, another card in the set called, like, Mushroom Watchdogs, which is, like, two dogs that Farmer Maggot uses to guard the mushrooms, but he's, like... They've the, the the hobbits have known them since they were puppies, and so Farmer Maggot's like, no, no, they won't bug you. Have some mushrooms. Huh. I have another one of the, what was it called? The other cards in the set? This is from M10. Oh, The List. It's just called The List? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So how do you, you're not familiar with The List? I'm not so, familiar with The List. Set boosters have yeah. a chance to have a card from The List, which is just reprints of cards from all through Magic, and they refresh the list every so often but a common from m10 mm-hmm. like why is burning inquiry on this i don't know okay I, I guess i just it's it's look i don't decide what goes on the list that's fair i mean i guess yeah you're not the arbiter of the list i just I, this at, is odd to me at magic on minneapolis we were doing a chaos draft that had a, a set booster from march of the machine and i opened a gta yeah, as the list card in the March of the Machine set booster. Holy crap. Uh, yeah, it went very well. <laughs> in the Kaladesh pre-release, I opened an invention of um, Vidalcan Shackles. <laughs> and I was just like, this wow. is not fair. <laughs> like, you're giving somebody who's played Legacy Shackles? Like, no, all right. I, I, I won that one. I, <laughs> I felt kind of bad about it. So this is interesting. In contrast to Gandalf the White. Yes card identity is also white. Saruman the white is blue. I see, I don't I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> I guess mechanic like I guess you have two conflicting ideas here, right? You need you the, the character from the show yeah. and you need the color identity established in magic. I think so much of the set is a flavor home run that I'm okay. I'm willing to forgive a couple of the of the odd that's odd fair. Color that's choices. fair. That's fair. For example, four and a blue for a four four with ward two. Avatar Wizard. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, amass orcs two. Amass orcs in blue? And the orc amassing is also flavorful for Saruman at this stage of, of his, his yeah, career. Yeah, but amass... Well, I guess amass was a blue, black, and red mechanic in... Um, in uh, War of the Spark. Yeah. yeah. Now, this is interesting. So you've, at time of recording, again, you've already recorded the judge video yes. for the CPR. Did you talk about the weird edge case about 
amass where if you have an amass zombie and an amass orc that one in particular which one which weird well case. no that one well it's you don't have one of each it's if you have a zombie army and you do a thing with Saruman the white here to amass orcs you put the counters on the army you have and then that army becomes a zombie orc army. oh interesting no i didn't i didn't talk about that just gee so, i wonder why well so the, the, the short answer is uh, typically for most judge rulings, we only, for, sorry, typically for the PPR script, yeah. we only focus on the mechanics as they would happen in a pre-release. I think that's or in very reasonable. Uh, and the reason for that was actually the very first pre, pre-release we ever did. I didn't make a judge video. Mm-hmm. I was live on camera with an iPad with Marshall Sutcliffe. And Marshall would be like, oh, hey, neat. How does this mechanic work? And I would explain it live, which was fine. And then Paul started taking judge questions from the chat, and then it all <laughs> fell apart. And Paul's like, oh, that's good. Well, we have a question here. Uh, how does that interact with a, an Eldrazi eating a card? And, and I was just like, <laughs> and I'm trying to look it up, and I'm also trying to carry a conversation with Marshall, and I'm like, no, from now on, ground rule, we don't, no edge, ca- no edge cases. That's that's what the chat judges yeah. do, do now. <laughs> Thank you. Shout out to the yeah. chat judges. But yeah, now people in chat can go, wait, how does this interact with uh, something from War of the Spark? Yeah. And then, you know, like pharmacist judge or someone can yeah, be like, yeah, yeah. be like, ah, well, interesting, you know, fun fact. I read through the comments and people were like, Serge looked kind of nervous in front of like <laughs> 6,000 people trying to make these calls while I'm just sweating. <laughs> Weird how that is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My rare out of this pack, by the way, is Elven Chorus. It's three and a green for an enchantment. You can look at the top card of your library at any time. We love that. You may cast creature spells from the top of your library. Creatures you control have tapped to add one mana of any color. I'm... What? That's it. Everyone's an elf. Everyone's an elf? And you can cast spells from the top of your creatures from the top of your library. Bird of Elf. Elf of Paradise. Yeah. Tap to add green would be classic Llanowar Elf. Tap to add one of any color. Yeah. Interesting. Pretty cool. Oh, 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 okay. Oh. I just got a mythic from the list. Oh, there you uh, go. Scion of Draco from Modern Horizons. Is that that set symbol? <laughs> yep. Yeah. 12 mana 4-4 four, four artifact dragon with domain. This spell costs 2 less to cast for each basic land amongst lands types you control. Flying. Each creature you control has vigilance if it's white, bl- hexproof if it's blue, lifelink if it's black, first strike if it's red, and trample if it's green. Okay. What a weird card to have in this pack. That's bizarre. Oh, oh, I had the triple rare. Wow. Yeah. The, the, oh, you got the triple. I finally did. Oh, I wonder if I had the quadra? Oh, I got the Nazgul too. Foil rare, Fall of Care Andros. I don't know if we've talked about this yet. Three man enchantment, two in a red. Whenever a creature an opponent controls is dealt excess non-combat damage, a mass X orcs, where X is that excess damage. Wow. And then seven red, Fall deals seven damage to target creature. And then my rare is another card we haven't talked about yet. Aomer? Yeah. Marshal of Rohan. Uh-huh. Four mana, four, four, two red, red, legendary human knight with haste. Whenever one or more other attacking legendary creatures you control die, untap all creatures you control. After this phase, there's an additional combat phase. This triggers only once each turn. That sweet. Okay. The triple rare. Love additional combat. Yeah. So I want, I want, I want your thoughts on a couple interrelated cards here. All right. This is an uncommon. Entish Restoration. Two and a green. Instant. Sacrifice a land. Search your library for up to two basic lands. Put them onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. If you control a creature with power four or greater, instead search your library for up to three basic lands, put them onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. So it's no harrow because they yeah. come in tapped. But is that good? I used to play that card Yeah. in like 2009. Which one, harrow? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like turbo land ramp sort of stuff like that. I don't think that one's going to see play. Mm. Uh, the only decks that are really trying to ramp super aggressively are like Scape Shift. Okay. And at four, they're probably, oh, that's three mana and it's an instant. But you're you're technically only getting plus one land. Oh, you could if you had the other creature, but I digress, right? Yeah, Cause, yeah. Because there's a hoop you have to jump through, but they're typically playing like a uh, Migration's basics. Path or something like right. that. And they have to be basics is another big one, yeah. Mm. So that's cool, yeah. but uh, I don't I don't think that's, I, I could see people playing that in Commander though. Yeah, that's true. All right, what about this? Long list of the Ents. Okay. It's a saga for one green mana. It has six chapters. (laughs) They're all the same. (laughs) 
Note a creature that hasn't been noted for long list of the Ents. We'll cast your next creature spell of that type this turn. It enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it. I need to see this. Yeah, I'm go sorry. For it. What in the world? So it's you go like play this and you go like elf. Then you cast an elf and it gets an extra plus one plus one counter. Then on your next turn, you say centaur. And then you play a centaur and it gets a plus one plus one counter. It has to be a different creature every time. But if you can cast a different creature type every time for, you know, six turns, then they all are going to get an additional plus one plus one counter on them. If you it, you could do this in like, for example, elves, but you, you go like uh, noble. Yeah. And then archer. Well, if you do... <laughs> and then you only do elf when you have to do it. You can n- do the other subtypes. I'm thinking uh, Naya humans. Yeah, yeah, there right? you go. Right, yeah. Knight, wizard, cleric, rogue. There you go. Right? Yeah. Noble is a good one there. Can I can I share with you a fun thing oh, that uh, please, please. pairs with pairs well with sagas? <laughs> it's Tom Bombadil. <laughs> have you seen Tom Bombadil? I have not. Five mana, full Wooburg for a 4-4 four, four god bard. God bard, as long as there are four or more lore counters among sagas you control, Tom Bombadil has hexproof and indestructible, because he just likes telling stories. Also, the stories never end, because, second ability, whenever the final chapter ability of a saga you control resolves, reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a saga, put that onto the battlefield, put the rest on the bottom in a random order, that only happens once per turn. You just get to... He just goes one story into another. That story's over, but wait, I got this one too. This is so, I mean, I don't know if it's good, but I'm immediately thinking of like Urza's saga into, (laughs) what was it? Like the blessing of Kiora, the one that makes like the seven, seven Kraken or whatever. Uh, Kiora best the sea god. Yeah, 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 right? Like, holy crap, I hadn't thought of that. Yeah, but you have to jump through a Wooburg in order to get there. I mean, like Urza's saga taps for colorless, so it's not helping you get there, but... This is one of those cards where it's like, here's the commander deck we think yeah. you should make. Yeah. But on the other hand, I kind of want to make it. Yeah. <laughs> it looks like fun. Story time. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. We've made two commander decks. We've got story time and whatever the, the one, two elf fight was. Right, right, right. Yeah. we got to come up with a name for that one. Oh, there we go. There's the mushroom watchdogs. I got another rare from The List. Ooh. And this one from... I don't know what this set symbol is. Is that Conflux? Wow, yeah, I think I think it is, yeah. Oh, that card. Yeah, Magna Goth Tree Folk. Heck yeah. Wheeler's ears perked up somewhere. Five mana, two, six Tree Folk for four and a green. For each basic land type amongst lands you control, Magna Goth has land walk of that type. I'm getting all the old cards today. So the rare from this pack is Moria Marauder. It's red, red for a 1-1 one, one Goblin Warrior with double strike. Hey, one one goblin with double strike. <laughs> Whenever a goblin or orc you control deals combat damage to a player, exile the top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. Isn't this... Uh, Sorry, what? Wasn't this a mythic in... Uh, there was a thing that did this to... But it did cared about goblins from like World Wake or something. It was also red red for a one one with double strike. Whenever a goblin you control deals combat damage to a player... That that's potentially a lot of cards that this you're is seeing. Very good. This is very very good. Yeah. Also, I want to share. Have you ever seen these cards with a with like the magic mini games on them? Sometimes the, you get little mini games with like there's like pack wars I, and stuff I, like that. I'm gonna there's be a, honest. I opened one looking through, and I've yeah. never. I just. I just. Nope. I just, tunnel vision. There's a new one. Uh, Sharky's tithe. Objective. Sharky and his ruffians have taken over the Shire and are tithing you and the other hobbits of Hobbiton. Try to hold on to your valuable heirlooms without losing them to these extorters. Each player opens a booster, sets aside all cards without magic card backs, then shuffles the remaining cards from the, uh, to form their face-down deck. Each round, players draw until they have four cards. Players then place two cards from their hand face down in front of them as heirlooms. Once heirlooms have been chosen, all players reveal them simultaneously and add up the mana values of their own cards. The players with the highest total mana value discards their heirlooms. Sharky has claimed them as payment. If any player's payment includes a land card, that player instead places the land into their bank to be counted later. You hold on to your home no matter what. 
each other player puts their two cards into their bank to be counted later. Sharky's greed has caused them to be overlooked. After five rounds, discard any remaining cards. Each player counts the mana values in their bank and earns that many points. Lands are worth three points. The player with the most points wins. Players who tie share the victory. You want to try Sharky's tithe? I guess? All right. Let's give it a shot. So we, I put two cards down in front. Yeah. And I want to have... The you wanna, lower amount. Yeah, you don't want to go too high. And right. then lands you keep no matter what when it's revealed. It goes into yeah. your bank. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's reveal. I have a mountain and Bilbo retired burglar, oh, you which went, is three mana. You went low. I have a mountain and the voracious fell beast, which is six mana. Okay. So Sharky takes your fell beast. Yeah. But your mountain goes into your bank because you keep your home no matter what. And you keep those and two. And these go into my bank. Yeah. All okay. right. That those two. All right. All right, and I've got Rush the Room, which is one mana, and Peregrine Took, which is three for a total of four. I have a Land the Shire, and oh. an artifact the Dunden Blade, which is two. Right. So my whole CMC is two. So these two get taken by Sharky. Yeah. Now we drop to four again. I've got Mariaduck Brandybuck and the Knights of Dole Amroth for a total of six. Oh, I could have beat you. I thought you had a strong hand. I put down Old Man Willow and Rise of the Witch King. Both are four <laughs> for a total of eight. Wow. Because I was like, I'm going to throw away my bad cards right now to see if I could get you. Reveal. I have an Erebor Flamesmith and an uruk Berserker for a total of five. Esquire of the King and Improvised Club for a total of three. All right. Good job. And then the final four cards. I've got Smeagol, Helpful Guide, and Nasty End, total five. Denethor, Ruling Steward, and Gorbag of Minas Morgul, total of five. In the event of a draw, what happens? Uh, it was the players with the highest total mana value discard their cards. So right. I guess we just, yep. everyone, Sharky takes all our stuff. Takes it all. All right. All right. So the total I managed to bank is six, nine, and a land for three. So that's, wait, 12. I have 11. Aha! I can't believe I would lose by exactly one point. I've never <laughs> been off by one in anything before. <laughs> I won Sharky's tie. <laughs> what a weird thing. Also, I got a Frodo, Sauron's Bane. Oh. Have you seen this? I have not. Single white mana for a 1-2 halfling citizen for Orzhov Orzhov. If Frodo, Sauron's Bane is a citizen, it becomes a halfling scout with base power toughness 2-3 and lifelink. Okay. For black, black, black. Oh, does it level up? Yeah. If, oh! if Frodo is a scout, it becomes a halfling rogue with whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, that player loses the game if the ring has tempted you four or more times this game. Otherwise, the ring tempts you. It's it's a funky little... Um, um, yes. The, the red and white one. I know. What's its name? <laughs> Why don't I know the name of that? Creature. Is it also a halfling too? I think it's, it's a, a Kithkin. I think it's a Kithkin. Yeah, I don't know if Kithkin. Figure is a... of Destiny. Yes. There we go. Neat. That's the third figure because uh, Modern Horizons had the ice one too, the snow one that leveled up. Oh, yeah. That's a good one too. From a limited perspective, I'm just happy that there's a cycle of land cyclers at common. Got another saga here mm -hmm. The Scroll of Isildur. Oh, yeah. Okay. Three mana, two and a blue. Chapter 1. Gain control of up to one target artifact for as long as you control Scroll of Isildur and the Ring tempts you. Mm. Chapter 2. Tap up to two target creatures. Put a stun counter on each of them. And then Chapter 3. Draw a card for each tapped creature target opponent controls. It's very interesting. Kind of a tempo play there. Dig that. I've got a Flame of Anor? Anor? Flame of something. One blue red for an instant. Choose one. If you control a wizard as you cast this spell, you may choose two instead. Target player draws two cards. Destroy target artifact. Flame of Anor deals five damage to, her, to target creature. That seems... Wow, this card's messed up. What? Three mana instant? Yeah. That's very strong. Wow, that's great. Holy crap. I have another very weird themed pack. Okay. I have Kaka the First, Landroval Horizons Witness... Right, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Kaka the second, Menaldor, Swift Savior. Oh, you've got the white bird and the blue bird and the white blue bird? And the white bird, I have the whole Kaka set. Bird Lord. This is really weird though, because I had that one pack that was nothing but green white, and I had and not only was it all they were side by side by side in the pack. Some of the set boosters must be collated in some they, way. They like I, 
That's a very odd coincidence to have yeah. the whole team. That's super fun, though. Right? Also, more birds. More birds. Caca. Caca. One of those, I believe, is the signpost uncommon for blue white because it cares about drawing two cards a turn. So, yeah, six mana, four, four. I have no idea. Gwai here, the Gwal- Windlord. Gwal here, I think. There's no L. Is there not? Gwai here. Totally thought that was an L. Yeah. I mean, it, would, it makes sense in your brain. A legendary could be a commander. Bird Noble. The spell costs two less to cast as long as you've drawn two or more cards this turn. Flying Vigilance. Other birds have vigilance. Hmm. Oh, I see what you mean, actually, about the, the the collation. Look at this. So the first half of this pack is an Oleg High Crusher, an Easterling Vanguard, a Haradrim Spearmaster, and a Rohirrim Lancer. So it's like grunts of the various armies. And then Frodo, Gollum, and Samwise. Like, that has to be on purpose. My rare is Sildur's Fateful Strike. Ooh. Legendary instant, which I don't think we've seen since Dominaria. I thought those were only sorceries. There's a legendary instant? Legendary instant. So it's uh, two black black. You may cast a legendary instant only if you control a legendary creature or planeswalker. Right. Destroy target creature. If its controller has more than four cards in hand, they exile cards from their hand equal to the difference. Huh. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Conversely, I have a graceful antelope. From whatever set this is from. Oh, wow. I was going to say, there haven't been antelopes in a very long time. I was excited for new antelopes. No. So that's an old antelope. Oh, spectacular. <laughs> that's so silly. Here's my actual rare. Okay. It's Hugh the Entwood. So the orcs are cutting down the trees. Three red red for a sorcery. Sacrifice any number of lands. It's flavorful. Reveal the top X cards of your library where X is the number of lands sacrificed this way. Choose any number of artifact and or land cards revealed this way. Put all non-land cards onto the battlefield, then put all land cards onto the battlefield tapped, and then put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Another one of these big, weird red mythics, eh? Yep. Theoretically powerful, but kind of weird. I got a very cool card to end on here. Okay. Golem's Bite. Ooh. Uncommon one mana black instant. Target creature gets minus two, minus two. Okay. And then from your graveyard, activated ability. Three and a black, exile it from your graveyard. The ring tempts you. Activate only as a sorcery. Oh, man. And then check out the art. So the art has an invisible hobbit fighting with Gollum right at the very end there. Oh, that's so cool. Right? Right, because he's biting. He's trying to bite his finger off, I guess. Before he falls into the volcano. Oh, that's so cool. It was pity that stayed Bilbo's hand. Do not be too eager to deal out death in judgment. Gollum has some part to play yet before the end. Gandalf to Frodo. Mm. That's the moment. And then the moment shows Gollum biting the finger off during the final moment of temptation when he couldn't cast the ring down. Foils are still holding... Pringle check? Yeah, they're... they're, (laughs) Ow. Yeah, they're... (laughs) I hit my finger on the microphone. The foils, on the other hand, are doing fine. Hey, neat. We opened a whole box of Lord of the Rings. I'm sorry. Magic the Gathering, Universes Beyond, The Lord of the Rings, Tales of Middle-Earth. A Richard Garfield game. Thanks for joining us for this. I uh, hope that uh, you enjoy uh, opening some of these on your own, or or not. But if you do, uh, I don't know where I was going with that. Let us know what you get. Yeah. Snap photos of your favorite cards and tag us on Twitter. <laughs> Whew, saved. Hey, everything we do here at Loading Ready Run is brought to you by you and your kind of support of our Patreon at patreon.com slash loading ready run. We really appreciate it. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I've been Graham, joined by Serge. So happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and Paul's been on tech this whole time, and I don't know who's editing this one, but it's probably Jordan, so thank you for that. Okay, bye.